I was on my way to work. I messaged her, she didn't reply. She always responds right away when we message her. And a few hours later, I tried again, no answer. And I tried calling her, didn't pick up. I tried not to panic because I thought maybe her phone was broken or she left it somewhere. And I keep trying, keep trying for a couple of days. Nothing. So that's how we lost her. When I was in China, I don't have any really bad memories back then. Maybe I was too young to understand some stuff. I came here so young, and when I was back there, I was always in school, and they teach us about the Communist Party. Now I think about it, it's kind of like a brainwashing. Then I came here, and then I start reading stuff and watching stuff. July 2009, that's the first time I heard about a protest. Uyghur youth involved in those peaceful demonstrations faced brutal crackdown by the Chinese military. So many Uyghur youth ended up getting executed or sentenced for life. It's not that common to express your dissatisfaction with the government with any kind of peaceful means like protesting against the government anymore. They cut communication from back home. I lost connection with my parents for almost six months. I realized my mom, what if something happens to her? How would you describe your sister? She became like a mother figure to me. My sister was the most calm, soft-hearted, soft-spoken person. She was a medical doctor, but she retired at an early age because of the personal medical reasons. After she retired, she continued to help the people who come from remote areas for medical treatments. She was helping them out day and the night, working more than before she retired. She was either translating or she was taking them from hospital to hospital. She used to do all that for free, even spending money from her own pocket. She was just a caring soul. I used to enjoy talking to her, hearing her voice. But after the crackdown started, the situation got really harsh. I stopped talking to her just to protect her. I missed her so much. As soon as I know about the concentration camp, that become like everyday worry for me. I heard whoever traveled overseas are being put into concentration camps. My mom, she came here a couple times. The day she was leaving, we took her to the airport. I tried numerous times. I said, mom, just, you know, stay, just stay. She came with her older aunt. She said, she's elderly. I can't just leave her going by herself. I will be back because I have 10 years U.S. visa, I can come back any time. So we went to the airport, we talked and we chat, and we said goodbye. So as soon as she went through the security checkpoint, my heart just sank. I feel like, oh my God, this is bad. What if I don't see her again? So, yeah, I didn't see her again. After my parents passed away, she was like a mother to me. Since September 11th, 2018, I had no idea where she is, 
how's her health conditions are. I don't even know if she's alive or not. I miss her so much. I wake up in the middle of the night and get thinking about her. Until today, I'm still trying to get information about her, but I don't have any concrete information when she was taken, what happened to her, why or how long she's going to be in there. I don't have any information like this. They say they're teaching them Mandarin Chinese. They're training them technical skills, teaching them laws. But my mom, she's a doctor. She speaks fluent Mandarin Chinese. She never committed any crime. Why is she in the camp? China calls the camps the vocational training centers. Vocational training means overcrowded rooms, malnutrition, dehydration, poor sanitation, mental and physical abuse. It sounds like I'm describing concentration camps here, doesn't it? Six days after I spoke at Hudson, she was abducted. They are trying to take my sister to silence me, but it's not going to work. We need to be the voice for those voiceless people. They are there suffering, hoping that people like us living in this free world will do something for them. Here's our chance. Speak their stories. Tell the world about them. Those are not just the numbers. Those are millions of mothers, fathers, daughters, brothers, sisters. We need to tell the world who they are. Like my sister, Dr. Gulshan Abbas. We need to talk about their names, their situation. I'm sorry that what we're doing is not enough and we can't ease the pain that everybody is going through back home. Stay strong. We will get through this. Hopefully one day we will reunite with our family. Things will get better. They will close the camps. <laughs>